Okay, so hello everyone. I'm Aditya Raj, joined by my teammates Akash Kumar Nayak and Hitik Adwani. And today we'll be presenting our work on analysis of graphs, which we have done over the last couple of months. So we'll be covering some applications of minimum spanning trees and shortest path algorithms on some data sets. So we have analyzed two data sets. The first one being uh, one, a data set which contains multiple transportation routes, which are stacked on top of each other. And the second one being a data set, which we have gotten from the SNAP website about uh, web pages on Facebook. So handing it over to Akash. Yeah, so coming to the details of the data set, the first data set is of a transportation network. It has three graphs, which are railways, airways, and roadways. The nodes in these graphs represent the cities and the edges between the nodes represent the connectivity between the cities. And the paths of these uh, graphs are weighted. Moving on to the next data set. The second data set is of uh, Facebook web pages sourced from Stanford large network data set collection. This graph is undirected and the nodes here represent Facebook web pages and the edges exist when there is mutual liking between two nodes that are the web pages. There are about 22,000 nodes and 171,000 edges in this data set. Coming to the definitions of the concepts that we have used in our applications, the first one is the degree of connection. The degree of a connection indicates how close a page is to another page in terms of likes for example like if there are two web pages a and b and they both like each other then an edge exists between them and a and b are called first degree connections and now suppose there is another web page c which likes b and b also likes c and they have a edge so here b and c are first degree connections but here, A and C are second degree connections. Moving on to the second concept that is Z factor. Z factor is a mathematical concept and you, we have related this to our project. Uh, by using this concept, we are uh, finding whether a web page has a good or bad reach. The formula used here is Z is equal to X minus mu by sigma, where mu is the mean and sigma is the standard deviation. All this are done considering the number of likes on the web pages. So coming to the analysis of multi transport network, we have calculated average, median, minimum, maximum. We have used these mathematical operations on the shortest paths and minimum spanning trees that we have found using our algorithms. Now handing it over to Aditya. Yeah, so thank you, Akash. So I'll be demonstrating our file reading system, which we have uh, developed. Uh, so we did this in order to automate everything and we can have n number of graphs if required. Uh, and we can calculate the average median min and apply all algorithms on it. So what we have done is we have just created uh, another text file. So one which contains the file names for all uh, of the other text files. So these text files are actually our data sets. Uh, so the first column represents the source second the target and the third is the weight uh, between the uh, nodes so these are the edge weights and we have just uh, put them into this uh, file reading system and we have created new read objects and we read them uh, read the lines and get the output for each uh, graph and just apply whatever functions we require on it so coming to some results that we have generated uh, the code is available on our GitHub repository and you can look into it if you want to indulge into it deeper. So um, looking at the results of the Prims and Kruskal's MST algorithms, uh, the first is the Kruskal algorithm. We calculated the average, median, max, and min. These are uh, normal mathematical operations and we just applied the formulae on the MST generated from each graph. So the average of Kruskal's was 10.66 and median 10, max 12, min 10. And we can see the results were the same for both Kruskal and Prims. So for average, max, and min, we just uh, got the MST for each and applied the mathematical formula on it. For median, we had to create an array list and we just sorted the elements in it uh, to get the median out of it by applying the formula of median. So handing it over to Akash for shortest path algorithms. So coming to the shortest path, Algorithms, we have used Dijkstra's and Bellman-Pod algorithms for finding the shortest path. 
here in this graph, you can see the average shortest path here. Average shortest path means that like, this is the average shortest path between every particular node. Like suppose you are selecting a node zero is the source and one is the target. So we are comparing this same pair of node in all the three gra graphs that are all the three transportation networks and finding the average. For this, we are using a matrix that is a 2D array to store the data and then output it. So here the x-axis of the graph represents the nodes. That is, we have six nodes in our graph. So total pairs are 36. And this is the minimum and maximum shortest path. This gives the minimum or the maximum uh, path between every particular pair. We have used the same concept here. That is the matrix concept. Here, minus one represents that there is no path between the nodes. And here, uh, we found out that from our code that the maximum and minimum shortest paths are always the same in our graph. So that's why we have represented both minimum and maximum in the same graph. And now median shortest path will be done by Aditya. Uh, thank you, Akash. So for median shortest path, we've actually found it as a challenge to do it for multi-node networks. And we calculated for each node, as Akash said. So what we did is we created a 3D array. So we mapped out all the elements uh, in one, in three different arrays for each graph. So one graph would have one array and so on. So then we took each element and put them together with its corresponding element in the other two graphs and put them together into an array list, uh, which we sorted and then applied the median formula again. So in this way, we were able to efficiently do 36 calculations with just one program. And you can see the result of this median in this graph. And we have calculated for every node. My, again, minus one indicates that there is no path found between the nodes. So uh, moving on to the second demo, which is the analysis of Facebook web pages data set. So uh, from the data set, which we got from the SNAP website, we found multiple degrees of connections, which was defined earlier. Uh, so we classified them as first, second, third, fourth, uh, fifth, and higher. So we calculated the average degree of connections of a page. Uh, and also we judged the Z-score of a page, which again is a mathematical operation. And we calculated some useful results from this. So we can see that the results of uh, the first, uh, the degree of connections across all the web pages. So we divided it into three different categories, which is the first to third, a fourth to fifth and the fifth plus degree. So in the program, we actually got numerical numbers, which we converted into percentages of all the web pages. So we can see that the first to third degree, which is usually known as the mutual uh, zone, uh, a lot of the web pages actually already like each other. So it becomes quite easy to recommend them. Mm -hmm. But as you can see that there is only 10%, but we need more. So fourth to fifth degree has a lot. Uh, generally, we think that if they have uh, more degrees, uh, five plus degrees, then usually they will be a higher percentage, but we can see that that's not the case. And we identified that fourth to fifth degree has the highest percentage of web pages. So this is backed up by the second, another program that we wrote, the average degree of connections, which came out to be 5.359. So we calculated all the degrees of connections using the shortest path algorithms, both, both Dijkstra's and Bellman Ford. And we found out that both output the same result. Uh, using this result, we found two different uh, results which uh, match each other. And we can say that we don't really have to waste any computation power in uh, recommending websites, uh, which are fifth plus degree. And we can recommend websites up to the fifth degree. And there's a very high chance that the users or the web pages will like each other. Okay, so moving on to the next result that we have gotten, which is the most popular web page in the data set. So we have analyzed the number of first degree connections by again using a 2D matrix and getting the number of likes for each page. And using that, we were able to rank the first page on the web page. And we got the page ID as 16895 and number of mutual likes that that page had is 709. Okay, so now moving on to Hithik. So as explained by Akash, the definition of Z-score, the Java code for implementation of Z-score can be found on our GitHub repository. What we have used in that is uh, from each source, we have found the number of likes by counting the out degree of each source to target node. And we have stored into a uh, some variable count and uh, by using the formula of Sigma Fi Xi for mean and for variance Sigma Fi Xi square. And for, from that we have found the standard deviation, which is used in the formula of Z score. And we have identified for each source node, if that is uh, greater than standard Z score, that is zero or not. 
and if it is greater than zero, we have concluded that it has some relevance data or it has a very good reach over the time. So the results of that can be represented here. Out of that, the 79% of those web pages uh, we found were uh, having uh, high reach and 21% were having low reach. So moving on to applications of this project. First one is recommendation of pages to a user. So we can predict the web page which a user like and can recommend the web page which are mutually liked to that web page uh, to the user. And this can eventually increase the engagement of the user on that platform, which nowadays every company is figuring out how to do it. Second application is relevancy of that page. So as concluded, if the source has Z score greater than zero, that is standard Z score that can be considered as a relevant page or it has some relevant data and has some good reads. And uh, if the web page has no relevant data over the period of time, the owner of that web page can recommend it to some users and can make its reach uh, to a very good level. And eventually relevancy of page can also be used to better spam detection on the website. Now, moving on to the future work on the project. So moreover, graph neural networks can be applied over this data set to find community detection and to ask user to join in that community or stay in that community or, uh, or etc. For example, if one updates his profile on Facebook, uh, like university name, so a window pops up like uh, people you might know or community you might want to connect with. So this can, this is done by graph neural networks. That's all from our side. Thank you for listening us. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.